Hi guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art. And today we're going to um, do another project involving space. Remember, space is the element of art that makes things look like they go back um, into space. And we're going to create an aquarium today. So the first thing you get to decide is if you want your paper to go up and down, we call that portrait, or side to side, we call that landscape, and it is your choice. Either way will work just fine for this project. I'm going to do mine portrait, and um, then you need a ruler and a pencil that's pretty sharp. Okay, we're going to start with our back wall, which is where I always like to start when I'm creating um, an indoor space in perspective. We're going to use um, perspective for this, and then I always lay my ruler against the edge of the paper so I know that I'm square. So I know that this isn't a skew or, or tilted or slanted. You'd still make a straight line, but it would just be diagonal or slanted. So we want to really make sure that it's flat. I'm going to go about in the middle of my paper. And I'm going to start... I'm starting where it says 8 centimeters on mine. Um, and I'm going to go over four centimeters. So there's one, two, three, four. So if you use eight on yours, you can go from eight to 12. And um, I'm going to give myself a little mark at each of those centimeters. So at the nine centimeter, the 10, and the 11. Okay? So I've marked those. Let me show you what I just did. Just marked right with my pencil, a little line at each of those. Okay, then I'm gonna take my pen, my ruler and I'm gonna go up and I wanna make sure this line is also straight. So I'm gonna line up my ruler with the top here. And this one I don't need to measure so much. I measured that one because we're gonna make a pattern on our floor here. But I'm gonna make sure my ruler's really lined up flat on the top and then I'm just gonna go up a ways. And then if I take my ruler and I go against um, the side over here again, if I start at 8, I should be able to go to 12 and finish the top of this rectangle. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to lay it across the top again, lining up really carefully. And make your rectangle. Okay. Once you have your rectangle um, on the back wall, then you're going to create your vanishing point. I'm going to put my vanishing point right about in the middle of um, that rectangle. You can put it anywhere in that rectangle you would like. It's just going to change how your floor and your ceiling look. So I put mine right there. Okay. Then I'm going to create the line that separates the wall from the ceiling. So I'm going to line up my ruler with the vanishing point and the corner of my box that I just made, that back wall. I'm not going to draw through the back wall box. I'm going to start up here and it almost goes to the corner of your paper. It's okay if it does or if it doesn't. It doesn't matter as long as you're lining up your dot and your corner. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Line up this dot and this corner. And this one's not going to go to the corner of my paper. That's just fine. And I draw outside of that back of that box that I made first. And then I'm going to line up my dot and this corner for the floor. And this one, too, is not going to go to the corner of my paper. That's just fine. All I'm doing is lining up the dot and the corner of the box. And then the same thing over here. Line up the dot in the corner of the box. Okay, next we're going to use those little dashes that I did across the floor because we're going to make our floor a checkered pattern. And I did those every centimeter. I'm going to line up a dash and the dot in the middle to make my floor. So really, and I have to kind of scooch over, and it's okay to turn your paper so that my hand is not in my way. Remember, things get bigger as they come closer to the viewer, so this flooring is going to look bigger as it gets closer to me. Now this one's almost going to be straight, but it's not quite, and that's just fine. I'm going to line up the dot, oh, can't see, the dot and the next mark I made for the centimeter. And then the same thing, I'm going to line up this dot and the mark I made for the centimeter. All right, so now we have our flooring done. Well, not all the way done. We're going to do... Um, the side walls and then we'll I'll show you how to make finish off the floor. So in one point perspective, we remember that things are going to get smaller further away, so they're going to appear closer together. So for the first um, 
side, like bracing the side wall, it's going to be pretty close to the back. I'm going to line up the top of my ruler and I'm going to mark that bigger the closer it gets to me. So I can't leave it the same distance. That would look too small. So I want to come so it looks bigger. And then, and then this one is going to be even bigger. And then the next one I maybe wouldn't see. Right, yeah, if I lay my ruler on the side here and I line it up with where it met right here at the corner and I go straight across, that's going to tell me where it should go up. So now wherever this corner is right here is where I'm going to go up. Straight across. And I'm going to go straight up right there. And then for this one, this back one, I'm going to go straight across. Okay. Line up straight. The top. And then get that corner. All right. Now, the next part is just going to be freehanded. So I'm going to freehand an arch right here. Just want it to be highest in the middle, and then come down, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Try to stay equidistant away from what I just made, and I'm going to do this one. And then the last one's probably going to go up and off, and then I'll come back over here. Okay, now we have everything sketched on where we want it. Um, you are going to draw your sea creatures um, on the, the sides and the back here. This tunnel is going to be all black because when you walk through the tunnel, so back here it's going to be all shaded in. Um, and then we're going to talk about the checkerboard floor. Remember, your black is not going to be as black, black as it can be that far back. So you're not pushing as hard as you can with your pencil. Okay, so then we're going to do a checkerboard. So this one is going to be a little darker than what I just made. And if I shade this one in. Then I'll skip the one next to it, and I'll do this one. Try to be really careful about staying in your lines. And if you get out like I just did, you can use an eraser. Okay, the next row, it's going to be the opposite. So instead of the first one being colored in, it's going to be the second one. I'm just trying to get a little darker each time. My hand's getting a little dirty. If yours gets dirty, you can um, wipe it off with a wipe. Lots of baby wipes in here. Okay, the next row is going to be even darker, and then your last row is going to be the darkest. And I'm not going to make you watch me do this all, but I'm just going to show you which ones are going to get shaded in. This one 
and this one, and then this one, and this one. Then your next step will be to sketch on your sea creatures in the background. And then we will finish this off by using um, color pencils to um, give our sea creatures color and also to give our watercolor. Don't forget on the bottom you can do like seaweed or um, rocks. Um, it doesn't just have to be sea creatures. You can make it more of um, the actual landscape that you'd see underwater too. All right, you guys, I can't wait to see what you create.